So I want to tell you about a patient that I, I worked with for the last couple of years. Her name is Liz. So Liz is a patient where this thing called REMS played a very big role in how we managed her bone health. So REMS is an ultrasound study that comes from uh, a company called Echolite, and I'm going to give you all the details on that. But what's important here is that Liz is a 57-year-old at the time, woman who had recently gone through menopause and felt like she was doing all the right stuff, but yet her bone density continued to worsen. She actually lost 12% on DEXA in 12 months. Those are not good numbers. She was scared to death. So she lives up in the Northeast, loves to hike, loves to be out in nature. She was actually unwilling to continue to do the things that she loved to do because she was so afraid of fracture. So she really wanted to figure out, what do I do next? Is it a drug? Do I wrap myself in bubble wrap? She didn't know. So she started uh, doing research online, just like most people who end up finding us. And what she was able to find is that there is a solution for her to find out more information, and that's REMS. So I'm going to talk in this video about REMS, how it helped her, how I think it compares to DEXA, how I think it compares to FRAX, and then ultimately why I think it's probably the best tool, but I definitely think that you should take that with uh, all the best information that you can because it is not that simple. So stick around. We're going to talk about REMS. We're going to talk about Liz and how this played out for her. I got a lot of great information for you. All right, so let's talk about REMS. And we can't talk about REMS without talking about DEXA. Now, if you're watching this channel, you've probably had a DEXA scan. Uh, you probably know what osteoporosis is. But for those that have not seen the detailed information on DEXA, DEXA is something that's actually not been around that long. It was adopted in the late 80s as the tool to diagnose osteoporosis. And it is a way to look at bone density. That's exactly what it is. And we shouldn't really look at it as anything other than a way to determine the mineral density of your bones. It's relatively controversial because DEXA doesn't tell us about quality. And this is a big deal because ultimately preventing fractures is about bone strength. Strength is a combination of quantity and quality, about mineralization and the actual composition of the things that are not mineralized the proteins, the matrix of the bone, how the bone is, is put together and remodeled. So all those things matter. And ultimately, we want to prevent fractures, not just remineralized bones. So we need to know something about quality or strength. And that's actually really hard to measure. So uh, REMS is a way to do that. Now, REMS is controversial because it came out after DEXA. So DEXA has been called the gold standard, and it is the gold standard. That's how we diagnose osteoporosis, according to the World Health Organization and uh, other national and international organizations. So when something comes out that is different than the gold standard, it's actually really hard to unseat the gold standard because you can't compare it to any third party thing to tell you if the new thing is better than the gold standard or not. And this is a challenge in the literature because when we compare something like REMS to DEXA, all we can do is say it is this close to DEXA, but what if DEXA is not right? And this is a, an issue because we know that DEXA is not necessarily consistent. So DEXA is not consistent from machine to machine, from operating system to operating system, from operator to operator. So go to a different machine, a different person, a different type of software, you're going to get a slightly different result. Now, those differences are estimated to be between 1% and 2%. But when you're talking about the sensitivity of a study of an actual imaging modality, that 1% to 2% could actually be a big deal. So... Why then do we end up using REMS at all? Well, I, I like to use REMS when I can because it gives you both a T-score, just like DEXA, so we can compare it, but then it also gives you a fragility score, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. So the REMS stands for Radio Frequency Echographic Multispectrometry, essentially. It's an ultrasound, but it's an ultrasound with a uh, special algorithm behind it that looks at how the bone is put together, what the, the actual components look like through the sound waves. And uh, what's cool is that they've done enough of these and have enough data to be able to say that REMS, the imaging, is actually very sensitive to bone strength and that you can really get a sense of the risk of fracture with it, which is really cool. So this is Italian technology. There's no radiation because it's an ultrasound. So that's a, a plus over DEXA. And 
it's mostly portable, so there's kind of bigger and smaller units, but it can actually fit in a suitcase. So in theory, you could take this thing with you wherever you want. You're likely to see this more often in like a clinician's office. We have one locally in Asheville uh, with uh, Dr. Mike Lewin, who we partnered with. Um, and so we can do them, you know, at a, uh, a small office locally. This is available worldwide in centers like this. You don't have to go to necessarily a big uh, hospital center. So there's some definite uh, big advantages there. So a lot of times the first question that people will ask is, well, is it as good as DEXA? I would argue that I've already said that it's actually better than DEXA, but let's talk about is it as sensitive at identifying osteoporosis as DEXA? And the good news is, is that there's actually some great studies on this. Now, this is a very recent study that I have here, and this is uh, this 2020 called the European Multicenter Trial. So as you might anticipate, this is from multiple centers in Europe. Now, what's cool about this is that they enrolled over 4,300 uh, patients between the ages of 30 and 90. That's a lot of people. And so what they did is they looked at both the DEXA and they looked at the REMS and then they compared the two and then they actually got really deep into the weeds. But let's just look at the comparison first. All right. So out of the gate, they basically just say that the REMS is very sensitive and specific. And so just quick statistical uh, summary. So sensitivity is the ability to identify when something is present. Specificity is the ability to identify something being absent which is confusing, I know, but I'll just leave it at that. So basically, the sensitivity compared to DEXA is a little over 90%, and the specificity being 95% uh, or a little bit over that for, for both uh, lumbar spine and for femoral neck. So basically, high sensitivity, higher specificity, um, and this is you know relatively good, but there's more. So one of the challenges of a study like this is that you have to, as a researcher, you have to look at all of the, the scans and decide which ones are good and which ones are bad. Um, so there is a, a number of different ways that you can do this. So one of the ways that they spun the, the data on this, these data were looked at through the lens of fracture as a clinical endpoint. In other words, can either of the tests DEXA or REMS determine if somebody is at a higher risk of fracture. And so this is where just based off of the T-scores, REMS actually outperform DEXA. And so the way that they report this is to say that there is a positive predictive value and a negative predictive value, which again, these are statistical terms that I don't don't really want to go into, but essentially you can say that when you look at these data a certain way, the PPV and NPV increased to 97 and 99% respectively. So those are very, very high numbers for the patients that you're actually interested in identifying, right? Those that are at risk of fracture. So this gets very into the weeds in the statistics, but basically it comes out saying that REMS is better when the osteoporosis is worse at predicting people that are actually going to be um, in need of uh, really getting some treatment. One of the cool things about Liz is that Liz heard about REMS through our masterclass. So by finding us on YouTube, she went to our masterclass and she heard about REMS based on what we were trying to educate people on, on how to manage bone health. Uh, on their own and at home. And so uh, if you want other people to learn just like Liz did, do me a huge favor right now, click the subscribe button. That subscribe button, the like button, the sign up for notifications and share, all of those things, all of those actions will encourage the algorithm of YouTube to put this video in front of other people that are looking for answers to bone health, to osteoporosis, to REMS. So help me help them by clicking all those things. Um, if you do share this with somebody, then obviously they can benefit directly from you, and that's great as well. If you want to see the master class, uh, look for the link in the description below. Free class taught by me um, uh, all about things that you can uh, do to improve bone health. So it's a really cool opportunity there. This next picture I want to put up here is something that comes out of a different study on REMS, but I, I put this up here because it's all about bone strength. And I mentioned bone strength earlier. It's a combination of quality and quantity, and uh, that's kind of how I describe it for the most part. But this this picture really tells, tells all the things. And this is what you can tell on an ultrasound that you can't tell on a two-dimensional x-ray. Just look at all of these things. You can look at the porosity, the thickness, you know, the cortical bone versus the trabecular bone. You know, how much uh, cross-linking is there? How much collagen density is there? All of these things you can actually see through ultrasound that you can't tell on x-ray. And this is why bone strength is so difficult to measure because, especially off of DEXA, you're only getting one piece of information. 
All right, now the other cool thing about REMS is the fragility score. So I already mentioned that the T-score is probably better on REMS than it is on DEXA, although you, you really can't say that because it's the gold standard, but I'm more confident in it. But what's also great about a REMS study, if you can get it, is that it will give you a fragility score. And this is what really helped Liz. So I'm gonna show you a sample report here in a second. And on this sample report, you're gonna see that even though the T-score might show osteoporosis, if the fragility score shows good bone quality, it puts us in a totally different scenario. So the question then is, what is this fragility score? Well, the fragility score is a combination of all the stuff that I just said based off of that bone strength figure. So the things that you can see on ultrasound on a, on a you know, it's almost a three-dimensional image because the sound rays are going through and then coming back. So it's really telling you something in three-dimensional uh, characteristics. So it can actually tell more about the bone quality that way, and it can tell you more about how the bone is put together that way. Um, and it is a completely independent risk factor of bone mineral density. And so they've studied this, and they've studied it and compared it to FRAX, and what they find is that it's actually probably equivalent to FRAX in identifying fracture risk. But the thing you have to keep in mind with FRAX is FRAX is dependent on T-score. So if you have something that's independent of T-score, I think arguably this would likely be better than FRAX because it's an additional piece of information. All right, so why is this such a big deal for Liz? Well, remember, Liz was backing down from her activities. She was deciding what she should do. She originally didn't wanna go on hormone therapy because of her fear around estrogen, and she had some risk factors that made this kind of a challenging question for her. So for her, knowing what her bone quality was like could actually make a difference for every single one of these decisions, which is a huge deal. Let me just show you a, a sample report. So uh, this is um, a report of her left femur. And now when you look at a REMS report, what, you, what you'll what you see is there are a couple of different pages and you get this, uh, this initial page that shows you the T-score, right? And so the T-score, just like a T-score in uh, DEXA for all the good and bad that it is. So this is an example of actually the similar score that she got. So her T-score on DEXA was negative 2.8. Her T-score on REMS is negative 2.4. Now, which one's more accurate? Man, you actually can't say. Um, we would have to go the, off the gold standard to say, yes, it's 2.8. But actually, what this does for me is to say, hey, maybe it's not as bad as we think it is. Maybe you actually don't even have osteoporosis, although I would still treat a T-score of negative 2.4. But what you also see here is you see this thing called fracture risk assessment at the bottom. And you say, oh, like it has a fragility score. And then there's this five-year risk of hip fracture. Well, let's go to the next page. So the next page actually shows you the fragility score matrix here. So what you can see is age on the bottom, fragility score on the vertical side. And you can see that as you get older, the fragility score kind of goes up. It's actually the opposite of the T-score the graph that we're usually seeing. But whenever it's in the green, that's a good sign that you have good bone quality and that your fracture risk is lower. Now, I can, of course, never guarantee that somebody's not going to fracture, but let's take this patient, for example, where her T-score is not that bad. Her fragility score is actually pretty darn good. So is this somebody who shouldn't be hiking? Maybe don't go hiking alone, but I think that the bone quality is probably not as bad here as just a DEXA alone, especially with a 12% drop, uh, may indicate. So this really helped Liz to feel better about her future, about what she could be doing, and also helped us to make some decisions around treatment. Now let's compare that REMS then to her FRAX. So her FRAX, when you put in all the information and just a couple of secondary things, so she was drinking more alcohol uh, early on, and, and this is something we worked on. She also had a history of uh, a parent fracturing her hip. So when you put in her information at the age of 58 with her T-score of negative 2.8, her FRAX uh, shows a hip fracture risk of 4.6% uh, over the next 10 years. She definitely meets criteria for pharmaceutical management, but she was very opposed to that. So then, all right, <clears throat> let's take that back to the REMS. And so what does the REM say about her fracture risk? Well, if you take the T-score and the fragility score and you put them together, you can actually see they have this matrix. And so for her, it puts her in the osteopenia category, actually, barely, um, and with normal bone fragility score. And so that makes her an R3, according to this matrix. And an R3 is a 4 to 8 fractures per 1,000 subjects in five years. And you think, like, what the heck does that mean? 
this is actually really confusing. And I, I, I know a lot of even physicians that, that have this machine that don't fully understand this. But basically, they're saying that there is a risk of four to eight fractures occurring per 1,000 patients. And so if you look and you say, well, the frax was the same, right? It's 4.6. But that's 4.6%, which would be four out of 100, not four out of 1,000. So you need to move the decimal point over. So really what the what the REMS is saying is it's 0.4 to 0.8% over the next five years, um, which is different also than FRAX, which is over the next 10 years. So it's a, it's a different metric, um, but basically what they're saying in summary is you have a less than 1% chance of breaking your hip over the next five years, all right? So I think that's also really helpful to say, oh, it's not actually nearly as high as FRAX would suggest, should actually be much better. Now, arguably, she's also right on the cusp of osteopenia and osteoporosis. And if you were to move that over and make her an R5, it would be a 1.5 to 3% risk. So, you know, that would definitely push her up. But it's still, this is her starting point. So we can use this as the starting point to help design a protocol for her bone health. All right, so what did we do for Liz? Well, before I get into that, remember that if you wanna help anybody else find this channel, please just click that subscribe button. Probably the, the easiest and most important thing you could do for me. Secondly, if you wanna learn more about how we manage osteoporosis, other things you can do on your own, look for the link for the masterclass below. If you wanna find the link for the free ebook, you can find that in the description below. Um, if you want to talk to our team members about our programs, uh, you can actually just click this link up here. That'll take you to a uh, scheduling form where you can chat with one of our team members. Okay, so what about Liz? Well, Liz was really excited to get this information. We still definitely wanted to manage her bone loss because she probably did lose a lot of bone over the last 12 months. And so different things that we talked about included all the lifestyle stuff that I always talk about. So let's optimize your diet. Now she was already eating well, but she had some gut dysfunction. So we worked on that. We got her lifting heavier weights. We got her in with somebody who could help her. Actually for her, it was in person, a little bit different than what we normally do, but somebody who can help her with her form because she was very worried about her spine. And sometimes in person is just simply better. And then we talked to her about some of the other lifestyle stuff, sleep, stress mitigation, connection, spiritual health, et cetera. And then we got her on a custom supplement plan based off of the biomarkers that we had already obtained and the functional data that we had. Um, and then she did end up starting hormone replacement for improving her bone health, but also for uh, other things as well. Uh, so this is something where she just had some bad information about the potential risks and uh, she really wasn't as big of a risk as likely she thought she was. Um, and then when we got around to the discussion around peptides, she was interested in doing some of those. So she started down that pathway. And then we talked about drugs. And by the time we got to drugs, she was so happy with all the things that she had uh, and with her follow-up plan uh, that um, she didn't want to consider drug therapy. Now, what's cool too about this particular case is that we do have now one year data um, on her DEXA and we were able to completely halt her bone loss. So that rapid slide, we were able to completely halt her bone biomarkers look amazing, definitely headed in the right direction. We know that DEXA is slow to show improvement. So I wouldn't expect improvement um, at one year. Um, she is now, I think she's about six months into her second year. And so I'm very confident that when we see her next DEXA, we're going to see improvements. Um, she was going to get a repeat REMS, but the REMS that was close to her, unfortunately, uh, left the state. And so she doesn't have access to that. But we did see a slowdown. We are going to see improvement. I'm very confident in that. So she is definitely on the right path. So thank you again so much for making it to the end of this video. Um, anything we can do to help you, please leave in the comments, uh, topics, questions, any of it. Just let us know. Thanks again.